Thanks very much. Thanks, dear. See you later. See you. It's typical of the district. It really is. You know, they're lovely, the mob down here. She's a lovely woman, that one. She saw me arrive in before I could get out the car. She said, give me the paper. Community for me is just kind of, it's like breathing, really. You know, I just, I live here and I'm part of it and it's everything I do every day. I think what makes McLaren Vale unique is the community first of all, and the crazy thinkers. There's been quite a lot of blue sky thinkers around here, which I like a lot. This is the only community that I've lived in. I've been here since the late 70s. So I probably can't compare it to any other. But what I love about this community is how supportive it is. They give and they give and they give. They support each other. Greg Trott used to say, the yeah. late Greg Trott used to say, McLaren Vale is God's country. Yeah. And it surely is. I, you know, when we do travel, like, we can't wait to come back to McLaren Vale. Geologically, it's very diverse in reality, where our grapes grow. We've got St Vincent's Golf out there, patron saint of winemakers. As a winemaking point of view, it's extremely unique because there's at least 40 different geologies. There's all the different hills and the flats. You can't go outside along the hills uh, on the escarpment at night time in summer because the gully winds are so strong that it's just, you'll be blown, blown away. <laughs> but um, that's the quirks of McLaren Vale. As Greg Trott said to me once, he said, well, uh, um, some areas get it right once in five years. In McLaren Vale, we get it right every year. We all worked on committees, we worked together and, and uh, you know, it was interesting if your vintage time was on and you ran out of one of the chemicals and you couldn't get your hands on it, you could bet your life that one of the other neighbours had let you have it, <laughs> some of his because he had some over and that sort of thing went on and we helped one another, you know. I don't think there was any sort of anti-feeling at all and uh, I think that's very important. Darry Osborne is, what is he, 92, but still gets the post every in the morning. So, and I'm usually there the same time as him, so we have post office chats. And I don't think he realises it, but sometimes he really gives me exactly what I need on that day, you know, um, words of advice. You're always leaning on people. There's a real tradition in McLaren Vale of roots and cooperation. You can mm. see it all over. And, um, and the new people that come to McLaren Vale, they just get taken into that as well. Yes, and, and as a very late comer, we didn't come into Wollonga until 1964. We'd been farming rather than horticulture, and we had no idea, and we got one of the Elliots put us on to Pete Rayner and Dom Scarpentoni, so they came in and pruned, and I, <laughs> I just watched this with awe, the way they pruned, and then in those days uh, there was no machine harvesting, it was all hand harvesting, which in a lot of ways was really good because there was camaraderie between the yeah. pickers and, mm. Uh, mm. and you'd have someone that could sing out there and, and it was very happy times. The Italian community in this area, probably more than other, other areas, got involved with, with the sporting clubs like and, and with the Growers Federation and stuff like that because we used to have pasta, cook pasta at the footy club and just invite everyone to come along and I think and we got a real lot of support from everyone and I think that helped blend the Italians and the Anglo-Saxon all together. Yes, they embraced us, all the Italians and uh, we got plenty of Aussie friends yeah. and they become part of us now and uh, I'm so proud of this area. There's not many big name wineries in McLaren Vale but there's a lot of really good little ones so we all have to collaborate together and we have Cellador customers come through and they're like oh you're so not competitive and you recommend it's like oh okay if you like our Fiano well go up and try Coriol's theirs is in a different style but you know you can compare and see because I think it's about people having a good experience in the region. And the other thing that was important, I think, is to realise that 
that the uh, visitor centre was built by volunteer labourers and everything was sort of, uh, you know, everybody pitched in. They planted the vineyards, the council gave us the land and we made wine out of the grapes and the wineries and sold it and the money was used to finance the, the visitor centre and eventually the council took it over. But it was built by volunteers, all of it, unbelievable. You talk about friendly district, it's just to remember how friendly it is when you think of that happening. That's another chili. You're not going to add that, are you? Well, I wouldn't mind Forty years ago, when we came here, 44 years ago, you could get pie and a pasty and maybe uh, fish and chips in McLaren yeah. Bay. Uh, now, you know, we've, I think we've got 29 eatery plays just on McLaren Bay Road alone. I was told by somebody in tourism 20 years ago that food is not a tourism driver. Don't try and make food a tourism product. Here we are. Food and wine, I just heard the other day, is the most important re reason that people visit this region. Well, of course it is. And that's not to mention where we source our food. That's a whole nut. We, we are now using local ingredients in a genuine way. We are genuinely buying from local producers, farmers, makers. And somewhere like Sloping now, corinne has got her own garden. Um, so she gen she's farming the stuff and then using it in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of other mm -hmm. Uh, restaurateurs who shop from the farmer's market or from producers that sell at the farmer's market, have their own gardens. That wasn't even a concept in the late 80s. You know, it all came out of a truck from the city. We've got about six different varieties, which are quite unusual. It's nice that we can kind of do our own thing and find varieties that are sustainable for the region. And that's been a massive change, I think. We were a mixed farm originally, so we had sheep, cattle, cropping, um, and way back before that, it was a Clydesdale stud and a Dorset Horn stud. Our boars in the district have uh, gradually becoming less uh, flow and more salt in them. And with the advent of uh, the Christie's Beach recycled water, we've been able to plant the whole property to, to a vineyard now. And that's made an absolute game changer. And it's a double whammy. It saves the golf. It's not going out to the golf. And it's being used on the vines. Late 1950s, 60s. To me, it looks like the beginning of some sustainability was that contour planting to stop the soil running away. OK, we've learnt today that rows that follow the, the contours of the ground and that are uh, sloping are a bit uh, difficult to keep the trellises upright on. But we have since learnt that by giving us good floor management, no tillage, that we can keep it there another way. That, that represents quite a big advance. And perhaps the growing of the sort of feeling that we've got something here we're caretakers of, we don't own. Let's try and leave it in a better condition for the succeeding yeah. generation. All the time now we look more closely at improving the soil and I think that's come on a long, long way in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And uh, as you can see in the programs that have been developed in McLaren Vale. This region attracts some good chefs who started to influence people. Farmers market started to influence the way people think. And it's such an important part of this community, not just chefs, but locals as a meeting place, as a, a place for ideas, stimulation, community. And gradually, gradually, brick by brick, people come here because they want to do stuff with food. We're attracting people who want to work food businesses. We're attracting people who want to farm. We now are recognised, I think, as one of Australia's food and wine destinations, and that's pleasing. I'm proud of that. So what are your hopes for the future of McLaren Vale <coughs> as, a, as a region? We've all got to be viable and, and have a really thriving grape growing industry here. So, and, and we're certainly expanding at a rapid rate and it's, and it's heading in the right direction, no, no questions.
It took me a little while to sort of realise that I could still be a girl and be part of a farming community. And that's from someone who's grown up in the, you know, in the industry really. So, you know, I just want that to be a, a more awareness broadly, um, you know, more women coming through STEM and, and um, you know, the sciences in general. We've been gradually growing, second generations are coming in, new young dudes who haven't got much money, have the courage to open cellar doors, they have faith in the region, they're, they're doing their own unique things. I hope that we continue to be like that. People are respectful of, of history in the area and respectful of, of what's, what's going on, but that doesn't mean that new people don't come in and try a whole new different way of making wine or doing different things different and obviously gin and whiskey and all these breweries and whatever popping up, which is great, it just makes the whole story so much richer and more interesting for people to come to. And one thing I'm pleased about is to see the young ones are now taking over the responsibility of nurturing this area mm. because we, we're getting towards the end of the conveyor belt but it's great to see the young <laughs> kids that they are they're not asking the government to do it yeah, they're, they're right. working hard to achieve what they wanted to make it a better place and as Colin said we're only custodians when we're here and then we hope oh. that the next generation is going to continue on and look after it I think McLaren Road has given myself, my family, a great life. Yes. Of course you've got to work, but we are in a good area. Right. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that good. was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So now you can eat and drink. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cheese. Yeah. Cheese. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you have something? Do it with us. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Michael. Come and sit down with us.